And at this point, we have a very unique sense of what this Bechira is. That Hashem chose the Shomesh Yisrael. What is this cho cho choosing about? They are rooted in, in Atmos. The choosing is that he chose them, that they should be the ones who should represent his presence in the world. That they should be the ones who are, who are not a bit toilet and, and toilet to, 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 to Hashem. This is the union that introduced this principle that Alchem and Shomis are rooted in Oisius. Oisius means the the means by which Elokus is expressed. That expressing is even higher than the than the than the essential Chochme itself, because. The, as we explained uh, yesterday, that that uh, the, the the principle of one essence is to be everywhere and to encompass everything. Therefore, this expressing these oases are really <coughs> a very fundamental proof of the essence. I want to add another point that may help us understand the principles that we are discussing. I'm saying that there's a Seichel Atzmi, the Rotzen Atzmi, And, and, and it's an awesome poshut, and the sacred poshut. And we discuss if it's poshut, what is the sacred about? If it's an awesome poshut, what is the rotsen about? So, a, 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 a very clear, a direct way to relate to this, to this principle is by understanding a fundamental reality in which we are participating all the time. And that is, we are walking on the ground, on the earth. We're trotting on the earth. There are two distinct, very diametrically opposed, opposite ways of relating to this principle. We're trotting on the earth. The way the world looks at it, the earth stands for nothing. It's a totally inanimate presence, a planet among planets. There's not a difference between the earth and the moon and the Mars. It's a planet that occurred some, through some kind of a, of a natural explosion. And therefore, because it's available, so we're trying on it. And there is not an inherent relationship between us and the Earth, or the Earth with us. This is a shocking, this is a horrific view. This is the way the world looks at it. We are nowhere. And anything that we do have is what we, have, we are constructing in our own. Any significance in our lives is based on what we construct on our own. In essence, where we are, nowhere. We are on the, on, on the Earth, on a planet. Planet Earth.
totally false. Earth is an intention, an intended creation by God. Earth is such a rich, unfathomable creation. The reason that we can trot on it, and everything can trot on it, that the trees can, can root in it, and the, and the cockroaches can, can, can crawl on it, is not because the Earth is a such a planet and doesn't care what happens. It is because the Earth provides for absolutely everything. This is God the creation. This is the Machus Elikis that allows for everything and, and contains everything, and not only allows, but provides for everything. The Earth is not only allowed for everything, it provides for everything. So while the earth, as we see it, is totally pushed without a message, inanimate, just, just a presence, this presence is a representative of a godly, of a godly reality. That's what this presence is. And this is why it, accompli it accommodates and encompasses everything. Everything lives from the earth. As an expression, it says, Hakil Hoyu Min Everything came to be from the earth. And as we're learning Poshet in, in the Chumash, the earth should produce livestock. The earth should produce vegetation. The earth contains a, a, a godly truth of Malchus that, that has everything. And it's constantly, and it's in and it's not neutrality and being oblivious to everything on the country. It's in and is to allow for everything and to provide for everything. And because it has this supreme presence that is, cannot be captured in one aspect of existence or another, or not even in all aspects of existence put together, it's greater than all of that. This is why we say it's neutral, it actually doesn't care. In reality, it represents the godly reality, truth. And this is what the Pesach says, according to me to lately, I made the earth, and upon it I created men. Which means, I created, I, I made earth. Earth is everything. And upon it I put men who is able to reveal and utilize the everything that the earth provides. And, and show, and, and show the, 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 the godly truth that is contained in earth. Odom Lehoboros, this is what Odom is. So Odom and earth, they belong with each other. This is not just an inadvertent relationship, a planet in, 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 among planets. Man belongs on earth. Odom Lehoboros and man's destiny, so to speak, man's godly purpose is to, re to develop and to reveal what is, what is possible on earth. On earth is possible everything, all the way to the point of Habizamikdosh uh, and Gilushchina and everything else. Matan Torah was also on earth. And this is what Torah is. Torah is that with, which tells us and describes what 
is the godly presence with his and, and, and on earth. Like we say all the time, if there is a dispute on, on earth, Torah adjudicates it. On what basis are they adjudicated? On the basis that this is all contained within a godly will, within a godly presence. And from a godly, from that perspective, Torah adjudicates it. This is what we said many times. This is something which is a little bit closer to our seichel. Property ownership by the human being is not just an earthly and a worldly phenomenon. I grabbed it and therefore I'm here, I'm, I'm holding it for me and I won't allow anybody else to, to intrude in it. Or is there a godly truth to it? So Torah tells us property ownership is a godly truth. God is the one who has allocates and assigns ownership. Because it is God who assigns ownership, this is why Torah can adjudicate in terms of, of dispute of ownership. Because ownership is not a worldly phenomenon, it's a godly phenomenon. Okay, let's continue now. Okay, so we are four lines from the bottom. The line begins with Kashron, and I pointed out that this is where we got a, a, a perspective on the union of Bechira, that he was Boichir in the Shomish soil, that they should be Miskashor Betoira. Why? And why is that? Because they don't show Mr. Soil are actually one. In essence, this is why they can be miscashed on the revealed level also, on the functional level as well. In our original discussion of it when this was first introduced, we we pointed out that at the time of Matan Torah, there was Chaimli Israel was Mishon Yaakov. Why was it Chaimli Israel? Because Matan Torah established the, the godly presence and the godly reality in the world. Israel are, are capable to submit to that reality. Directly, not through so there is some kind of a worldly gain, worldly function. They can submit to that reality. Akum cannot submit to that reality because it does away with their own presence, their worldly presence. This is why it was Misali Akum and Chaim and Israel. This is the simile that we said here now. Okay, again, four lines from the bottom. This is as the as in, as in the example. So call Hoab that the entire desire of the father, the Atmus Nav Mamosh with the very essence of his nephesh, Mamosh means literally. Not that this is a desire flowing from the Yatsim or because he can relate to it, because he wishes it, but the Asmus Namesh, Namshoi, the very this is what his nefesh is connected to. Hurak Bivnai, it is exclusively in his son. This is the Hefa to Ab. His Hefaz is to his son, Lefi Shahu Atmus. Because, because he is his etzim. He is his etzim. This is why the the chayfot who up is beatzmos beatzmos nafshes in the in the vnei. Okay, so. 
let's get a little bit of a of an in of a handle on this. And this is his atmos. So what does it mean? This is his desire. Desire in, in Bnei. Desire, he can desire something where there is a functional presence for desire. But this is one thing. Can one say his desire is in himself? Chayfetz ho'ah be'asmus nafshi will have the name of Meishu Atmos. What's the question? And how could he desire himself? Yeah. Is that? It seems to be an odd type of statement. Chayfetz ho'ah be'asmus nafshi. If this Ibn is Atmusri, so what should mean he wants it? He has it. This is the Atmus. That's what he has himself. The principle, the term of wanting himself doesn't apply. Himself is himself. Wanting means he wants something that that is that can be wanted. And there's something to be identified externally. So what is the pshat? Chayfetz ho'av be'atzmus nafshe mamash hurag b'vnei And what does it mean that he has a chayfetz be'atzmus nafshe mamash? He loves his son. This is part of the koiches ha'nefesh. What does it mean he wants it? But ask us now. We would like your attention on this. You mentioned yesterday that the principle of Etzim is that Etzim is everywhere. Etzim is, is an inherent truth. Just like we say in the motion, when the sun rises, everything becomes like the sun. Because the sun is an Etzim behavior. Not because the sun illuminates it and sends its rays, but because the sun is an Etzim behavior, it, it, it transforms everything in, in, its like, in its likeness. The world no longer has darkness. It has become its sun. This is the principle <coughs> being mentioned many times. The Prosik says, as our Shemesh, Mem Shemesh rules the day. It rules the day. It rules the day. It rules the day means it claims the day to itself. It belongs to him. This is the principle of Etzim. The Etzim Nafshay Mamish, Atmos Nafshay Mamish, since we're talking about Atmos, it means that this is an Etzim that is not limited to its own presence, but it actually relates to, to the entire existence. I see relates to the entire existence. Similar to what we mentioned, this is more clear, that a person owns a home. He owns a home. He's automatically in every corner of the home. But that's what an etzim is. Etzim means that, that this translates the truth of his truth everywhere. He is the truth and therefore this is his truth is automatically encompasses everything. Every last corner of his own. This means Atzmus. Atzmus is a similar thing. This is Atzmus 
SR nefesh means that it is, it has, um, that its truth encompasses everything. What does it mean it encompasses everything? He doesn't own the whole world. It means that any place in the world that that he is represented like his son, his son came from him, his son represents him, just like the home represents him, any place in the world that he is represented, his whole etzim is there. Atmos Napshe Mamosh, he's connected to his son. Not via some kind of a string, some kind of a functional element. Was that a statement a moment ago? His whole etzim is there. Meaning the son and the father remain separate, or the, the son and the earth don't become one. What's the meaning his whole etzim is, is there by the son or by the earth? By the sun, we said, this is the the principle of what the sun stands for. The sun is the bright, is 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 the The sun has many other things, but the etzim, what is the sun? Is the etzim of the sun is is brightness, resulting in day. Uh, resulting in day, but this this completely transforms it. It owns the day. The father. The father has has a body. Is that his essence? What is the essence of the father? What is the essence of the human being? His nephesh. The infinity that is that he stands that he that is that is him. That's a nafsha. The body is not a nafsha. That means the nefesh. Nefesh is not limited to time and space. Nefesh is is atzim. From this nefesh, this is what enables him to create an offspring, an eternal offspring. This offspring now exists in space outside of himself. Right? He's, his nefesh is in the body. And this, this offspring has a separate body, so therefore it exists in space outside of himself. Therefore, their connection between them would be, would seem to be through, through some kind of a interaction in two separate spaces. So this is what we explained. Despite the fact that there are two separate spaces, there is an there is an atmosphere of the nefesh that spreads to that space and encompasses that space because this nefesh, as I said, is an atmosphere. Therefore, wherever, wherever this nefesh spreads, it becomes one with it. Just like in the motion of the home. The home is also a separate entity of the person. He cannot be in every room of the home at the same time. He's in one place of the home at other time. And yet he is everywhere. Why? Because the home is um, something that represents his atmos. Because it its heart's muse. Therefore, automatically, that engal encompasses the entire universe. It can, it's contained within his heart's The sun, anything that can, where the person, the etzema nefesh can spread, remains 
or, or is encompassed by the atzmius of the nefesh. Yes, indeed, it came from the nefesh, as I said, and, it's, and, it, and the sun is in a separate body. His atzmius encompasses that space as well. Because he has, because he has an atz atzmius, and, and the nefesh is an atz. This is what the emphasis over here is. I'd like you to try to understand the way the Rebbe is calling our attention to his words. We may read them through and, 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 and skip them. But let's go back. Chayfed, call Chayfed Hoab, the entire desire of the Father, Ba'atzmus Nafshoi Mamosh, with the essence of his nephesh, Mamosh. What is Mamosh and? It's not just a, an essential will, an essential desire, an essential love. It is the actual nefesh itself. The nefesh itself is present in the sun. In the sense that it spreads and it encompasses th that, that area as well. Who rag bivnoi, that hefetz is only in his son. Why? Lefisha who at Musa? Because this is his answer. Again, we have to understand the, the, this this word Lefisha who at Musa. We we would tend very easily to translate this in simple worldly terms. It's my son. I love him. This is not what it says here. Yes, you love him, God. Lefisha who at Musa. This is his answer. This is. The, where his atzim had actually expanded to. Because a son is created by the atzim of nefesh. It's not a functional element in the nefesh to create a son. So the father's essence is in the soul of the son. And the son has done in the shaman as its own nefesh. That's right. Close to the sun and the earth, which there's no sun on the earth, or there is, so. but here it's mamish. There's a nefesh in the sun, and that's also the nefesh of the father. No, the sun has his own nefesh, but the cre the fact that there is a sun, the fact that there is a sun, the fact that there is another human being who has an nefesh of his own, but he's present in this world. And as human function in this world. What created what gave him that presence in the world? Who invited him to the world? Is it the father's desire to have a friend? Is it the father's seichel, midas, love? Who invited him to the to, to the world? Is S S on Now once the sun is created, he chooses the sun. What? Now once the sun is created, now he chooses the sun. And now he chooses the sun. That's what Hafez he wants it. But why does he want it? Because who else must? He put him. He put him there. He put him there. He invited him. He defined him. Why did he put him? Because his nefesh is an atzmi that actually expands beyond his own existence. This is on his own limits. This chafetz uh, or choosing. Uh, this, this is like making manifest what is. This is a revelation of what. What is, or this is a different a second step? No, that is revelation of what is. Uh -huh. But but we are what we are struggling with is to explain that this revelation is not a functional element. It's a relation of of the essence that is. It's not an element of love, affection. 
What is the etzim have to do? My, what is this etzim here have to do with this etzim here? The essence is an essence is everywhere. That's like a person, a marshal from the house, from the home, is a very pertinent marshal to understand. A person has a home, instantaneously he's in every corner of the home. How? Because a home is an essential element of the home. Not a functional element. It's an essential element. This is why you pointed out, okay, we have the time is up, right? That's what we pointed out, that if a person has a home that is not suitable for him, he cannot actually identify himself with the home, like the Empire State Building. It's not his home. A home is that which he can identify with, in essence, that this is my home. This is the beginning of a son. The son is mine. This is his essence. This is the emphasis over here. Atmos nafshe mamosh. Not qualities of the nefesh, but the atmos of the nefesh itself. Urag bimnei lefishu atmos. Okay, this is it for this morning. By the father and son. We're saying the etzem is equally by the son as by the father. It's a duplicate of God. By the sunlight and the earth, the earth doesn't become a son. It stays earth. No, the son is a separate entity. But he contains this equal etzem that's by, as it's by the father, is by the son. No. The father encompasses the son. The father's etzem expands to have a son. But it remains coming from the father even after the son is the son. Yes, separate. It's a separate entity, as I said before. The son is definitely a separate entity. But the father, the etzem is not limited to his own presence. Just like in the home. The presence of the person is not limited to the room in which he is currently sitting. The other two are separate rooms, but he's there also. But he's not there. The son contains it within himself, or he's still as the recipient from the father. The father contains it. So the son is receiving it from the father. That's right. The father is encompassing that reality. <laughs>